Well, hello again from Kingston. At the end of what I think was the week with the busiest day so far on the project. And if you want to hear why, then you'll have to watch the whole episode and the whole update. But whether you do or you don't, thanks for watching anyway, and uh, I hope you enjoy the information. I thought it might be interesting this week to begin with an overview of just what stage has been reached. You're looking at the work that Bar Construction and John's Paving have been doing this week to prepare the approach to the bridge from the west. And now, reversing direction, we're running from the steel span westward. Over spans 17 and 16, where reinforcing rod is largely in place, back towards span 13, where a pour took place this week. Here's the concrete pumper, preparing to pour slab on span 13. And beyond you can see, there's curing concrete, or complete concrete. The scaffolding ladder you see is on span 9. And as we approach span 8 and the cabins, you can see that brackets have already been removed and the railings are in place on the north and south sides of the bridge. Note as we pass the expansion joint awaiting installation between spans 6 and 7. And if you pay close attention to the dividing wall between the multi-use pathway and the vehicle lanes, you'll see swellings at intervals, which is where the lamp posts will be situated. Getting closer to shore and passing the pass-through under span 2, you'll see that the excavator is already removing surplus gravel from the causeway just before the west abutment. Moving to the east end, this is how the team from Linkline Fence began their week. By week's end, they had largely completed the section of fence that leads to the east abutment. One more week of such dedicated effort should see the fence complete and ready for service. Overall on the east end, there's a sense of completion, partly evidenced by the appearance of Matt Cudd's infrastructure team to clear and clean the drains on the road, and partially by work undertaken by utilities Kingston and Tomlinson to place an extension on the fire hydrant on the now closed former library entrance. After successful tests of pressure and purity, it was brought back into service on Tuesday. Tomlinson were then able to close the gap in what will be the future sidewalk and Sousa to prepare curbs and forms to pour the concrete sidewalk itself. Preparations for paving were well advanced too with a great deal of effort going into the north side of the new library car park. After a disappointingly damp Thursday, on Friday, which was rather windy, it was finally time for Williams Paving to make some of that asphalt happen. The odd access challenge was solved by using a relay of skid steer vehicles delivering asphalt from their buckets and several substantial sections of the multi-use pathway were laid on Friday. A small section of Highway 15, in need of minor repair, was also stripped and fresh asphalt laid. With appropriate specialised products applied at high temperature to ensure adhesion between the old and the new. Wednesday might well have been designated Concrete Day, with Sousa doing some more excellent work to close the gap that had been the old library entrance, including their usual high standard of hand finishing, and then, on the main spans, another major pour using the pumping machine. Initially, to pour yet another diaphragm, before enlisting the aid of the Gomaco machine in pouring another slab. 
Each pour of this kind involves a determined, well-trained and well-coordinated crew operating entirely together as a team. The excellent results obtained speak for themselves. On Friday, the pumper would return yet again, this time to pour, I think, a slab on span 13. And if that weren't enough concrete for one day, the 1200 crane was pressed into service lifting concrete buckets up to the steel span where the work on forming the north wall, interrupted a week ago by a thunderstorm, was continued. Note the use of the very helpful Danuser Mega Mixer. Black and McDonald installed a new control box this week at the junction on Point St Mark Drive. A pretty wet Thursday didn't prevent Barr from completing a great deal of work to form the new approach road to the west of Upland. Not far away, the Kiewit crew continues to remove gravel from the western half of the temporary causeway, which is then taken around the 401 to the east laydown. It would be wrong to fail to mention too the work that's going on largely out of sight to remove the angle brackets from the north side of the steel span. However, as we wind down into this week's wildlife section, let's have a look up Gore Road and just how things are shaping up on the east end. Well, now that you've seen the whole update, what do you think? Was that the busiest day you can remember on the project? I think so. Anyway, if you want to know more about the project and how it proceeds, please consider subscribing and make sure that you click the notification bell. But in any case, give me a like. See you next week. Bye for now.